Hi everyone, this is Chris. Welcome back to another episode of Catching Photons. Last time we discovered the focal length and the aperture as two main properties of a scope. This time we want to bring those two units together and see what scopes we can possibly create. So, the reasoning is fairly simple. You take an image of a given field of view, then you collect that light from this patch of the sky onto a given sensor, and that gives you some level X of luminosity. But if you then use a longer focal length, but fix the aperture, then you project a smaller patch of the sky with less light onto the same chip and hence get a lower luminosity. So images tend to get darker if you increase the focal length, but fix everything else. On the other hand, if you increase the aperture of the scope, then you will get more light from the same patch of the sky and the image will be brighter again. So longer focal length means darker image, but larger aperture means brighter image. So it is possible for a long scope with a wide aperture to produce a brighter image than a shorter scope with a very narrow aperture. And to get an idea of what the scope can deliver, we introduce then the f-ratio. The f-ratio is simply the focal length divided by the aperture. So if you have a long scope, say 1000 mm, and a small aperture, say 50 mm, then you get an f-ratio of 1000 divided by 50 equals 20. And then we write f20 to indicate that this is a ratio. The higher the f-ratio, the less light the scope collects. The lower the f-ratio, the more light it collects. And thus the brighter the appearance of the images are. f20 therefore means that the scope can only collect very little light. Just to clarify things. When we say collect less light or more light, you all know that we mean light per time. Because of course you could produce a totally overexposed image just by turning up the exposure time to 11. But in our case we, of course, want to compare always the same comparable time intervals. Yep. Here are examples of reasonable f-ratios on the market. We start with a rather cheap scope. It's quite long, focal length 800 mm and rather narrow with 50 mm. So the f-ratio is f16 and therefore we call this scope slow. Why do we call this scope slow? Because if you compare two scopes, one short, the other long and both have the same aperture. If you then want to create an equally bright image with both scopes, then the scope with the higher f-ratio will need a longer exposure to meet the brightness level of the shorter scope. Hence, the scope with the higher f-ratio is slower, yeah? So then we have a Vixen lens scope at 1000mm focal length. So longer than the first one. But because the aperture with 105mm is much wider, the f-ratio is actually lower at f9.5. So the scope is faster than the first one and hence can collect more light. Up, uh, down we go. The small NG scope has 316mm focal length, so a rather short scope, and an aperture of 50mm, so the same as the first scope. But because it's shorter, the field of view is much wider and hence it collects much more light from this bigger section of the sky. The f-ratio is therefore significantly lower with f7.2. The next scope enters the range of what we can call fast scopes. It's my beloved Skywatch on Newtonian. With 750mm focal length it's intermediate long, but with an aperture of 150mm it can collect lots of photons. That gives us f5. And then we have the Brasser refractor with short 450mm focal length. Having nearly the same aperture as the long Vixen, that was the second scope, its f-ratio is down to f4.5. And then we end the line with the incredible Rasa from Celestron. It has a focal length of only 400mm, but still an aperture of over 200mm, so more than half of the focal length. That gives the Rasa an incredible view on a big chunk of the sky while collecting as much light as possible, the focal length is down to f2. With f4.5 or even the Rasa with f2, we are getting in the range of DSLR lenses. But with focal lengths over 400mm and apertures up to 200mm. You can take incredible images with a Rasa and yes, it's rather costy. <laughs> Such scopes are called astrographs, as they are intentionally designed for taking images of the sky. With a Rasa it's not even possible to attach a normal eyepiece, so it's imaging only, 
know what. Is a high F ratio always bad? Nah, I wouldn't say so. See, for astro imaging, you always tend towards the lowest F ratio just because this cuts your imaging time down because the scope can gather light faster. But there can be disadvantages. Low F ratios on some reflection scopes can, for example, lead to aberrations at the outer borders of the image. So here you might not step down too far, but that's far ahead. But first and foremost, the scope needs to fit the requirements, and the focal length must fit the objects being observed, and cost is a major factor to consider too. Also, if you plan to capture or observe planets and the moon only, they tend to be so bright that you can easily observe them with f10 or even f16 scopes. That's fine for them, but then never try to capture a faint galaxy with that scope, okay? Uh, watch out! Never try to talk to a down-to-earth daylight photographer. They use a different way of using the terms above. They say focal length, like us, but then they weirdly use the f ratio instead of the aperture. So they tend to say, I shot at aperture f2. Well, that's kind of strange, but they do so to clarify the amount of light they are working with. We have a fixed aperture and a fixed focal length, so that's not our business. We stay with focal length, the aperture and the ratio between them. That's cool and the truth. Okay, homework. Find some cheap scopes online, say on a major online selling platform. Work out their F ratio and compare the results with the beautiful images of faint nebulas, distant galaxies and so on in the commercials around that scope. It's, it's funny what they want to sell us sometimes. So, now you are equipped with the first tools to work out the basic optical qualities and capabilities for the thousands of scopes out there. Long and short focal length, wide and narrow aperture, and the resulting fastness of a scope. All in your hands. And next video or so we will open up the scopes and study their inner structure. We will discover lens and mirror scopes, different architectures, and even some mixed types. So stay tuned. Like this video? Hit the like button. But more importantly, guide newcomers to this tutorial if you think they can here find a safe haven for starting with this wonderful hobby. And tip of the day, I added a link below. It leads to a webpage where you can calculate the FOV of a given telescope using its specifications. Now you are an expert on this, so go on and play around. And as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.